So bronchial thermoplasty is really not a complicated or difficult procedure. It's a relatively low risk procedure. It's three sessions. Each session takes me about an hour. The patient recovers for two hours and then they go home. And what we're doing is using a heated coil in the airways. It's about the temperature of a hot cup of coffee. We're not burning anything. We're heating up the airways and what that causes is the smooth muscle around the airway to atrophy or go away so that the airway can't constrict anymore. And that means less wheezing and less bronchospasm and shortness of breath. So there is a specific population we're looking at and this is the asthmatic with se severe persistent symptoms despite a maximal regimen. And what I mean by a maximal regimen is we already have them on all the inhalers, we have them on oral medications, and many, for many of them it's just not enough and they end up on prednisone, systemic steroids, and they can't come off of it. Or they're getting immunomodulatory injections every two weeks or four weeks, and, which are very expensive and painful and time consuming for the patient to come like that. So those are usually the patients that we're thinking about bronchial thermoplasty for. It's not a cure of asthma, but from what I've seen in my patients, it's it makes the asthma substantially better to the point where patients can come off the steroids and off the immunomodulators. I think in the long run it's, it's clearly a money saver. If you have a patient who's on years and years of systemic prednisone, um, the sequelae of that is hip replacements, uh, cataract surgeries, they can get stomach ulcers, have GI bleeding, so lots of complications. And so if we can just uh, eliminate the steroids alone, I think there's a cost saving. So if we could just uh, do a procedure that will help keep the patient off steroids, that would be a cost savings long term for sure. So lung cancer is uh, abnormal proliferation of tissues within the lung. Uh, we currently classify it into two main subsets, small cell lung cancer and non-small cell lung cancer, uh, from which there are additional subsets. Lung cancer is uh, one of the more common causes of cancer here in Hawaii. It's also the leading cause of cancer mortality in Hawaii. Fortunately, many patients with lung cancer don't have any symptoms until late in their disease course. Uh, and so often I'm seeing a patient and making the diagnosis of lung cancer uh, when they're in an advanced stage. There is uh, there is a, a CT screening for if you meet certain criteria, um, pack years of smoking, age range. Um, so we will use, use those criteria to screen certain higher risk patients. Um, maybe if you have a family history of lung cancer and you're a smoker, it would be important to screen. So we do CT uh, screening on patients. Well, if the cancer is caught early enough and it hasn't spread and their stage is appropriate, then surgery would, would be the the ultimate for cure. Uh, sometimes depending on the stage we will offer either chemotherapy before or after surgery. If the patient's stage is advanced and they're not a candidate for surgical resection for cure, then there are effective chemotherapy and radiation regimens. Another newer, more important modality is targeted therapy. Uh, so the treatment of lung cancer is advanced to the point where we're now able to identify markers on the tumor cells themselves. If you are a patient that expresses those markers, we have medications that target them directly, more specific therapy. So navigational bronchoscopy is a newer technique that allows us to reach spots in the lung or lesions that traditionally would only have been able to be accessed by a surgery. 
And so what I tell my patients is this technology is kind of like GPS for your car. Uh, we use their CAT scan to make a road map ahead of time in the airways out to a specific lesion. And then we bring the patient in and using bronchoscopy and this technique, we can navigate to the lesion and biopsy it non-invasively pretty much so the patient doesn't have to have surgery.